Hi, I'm Dr. Bradshaw, and this is Biology 3300, or Developmental Biology. And this class is normally taught as an online class in the fall and the spring, but normally in person in the summer. And obviously, because of circumstances, we have to continue to do this class online. But I wanted to do an intro video just so that you can see my face and know the person behind the voice that's on the videos. Um, I also wanted to kind of walk you a little bit through this course so that you can navigate it uh, and understand the general outline of it. So when you go onto the course homepage, you should be able to complete everything for the course from that homepage. You shouldn't have to try to navigate into files and quizzes and, other, and some of these things are actually turned off so that you pretty much just navigate through the homepage. And it goes from top to bottom, basically how you're supposed to complete the class. So if you'll look under course information, you'll see that uh, you have the syllabus. Make sure you read through that, not just to familiarize yourself with how the class goes, but there is a syllabus quiz that's worth a point. But I want you to complete that and you are required to get 100% on that in order to move forward. Um, if you don't, then it won't allow you to. And this is just our way of making sure that you've read through the syllabus, you know what's expected, and then you can start you know, working on the material in the course. Other things under course information, instructor information, office hours, um, make sure you read through those. All of our office hours have to be virtual, obviously, um, but you can schedule them and we can meet via Canvas and discuss things as you need. You can email me if you don't want to meet with me virtually. Um, you can post things on the discussion board. Basically, whatever you're comfortable with in terms of getting the help that you need. Now, the lecture files are all of my PowerPoints that you need for um, this class. And so that you, when you're watching the videos and you're listening and taking notes, you'll have those PowerPoints in front of you as well so that you can kind of make take notes on them as you're doing the class, just like you would in a real life setting if you were in class and you know handwriting notes or if you were on your computer and taking notes, any of those works. Um, the quiz and exam reviews, uh, as well as other links, are on there as well. Each lecture basically has its own review, but um, generally when you click on quiz and exam reviews, um, this just kind of gives another um, layer to that um, review to be able to help you um, compartmentalize some of the information. Because you, you'll learn that as you're going through each of the lectures, um, it's everywhere. There's so much information that you need to have help to compartmentalize what belongs where and what this has to do, you know, basically spelling it out for you. And so the quiz and exam reviews are basically designed to give you some questions, just some open-ended questions to get you thinking about the core topics that you're going to find on the um, quizzes and exams. And I'll talk a little bit more about the quizzes and exams later, but each uh, quiz has its own review. Each exam has its own review to be able to teach you um, uh, what's going on. And uh, so listen to the lectures, take notes, listen to the reviews, compartmentalize that information into the information that you need to be able to be successful for the quizzes and reviews. And um, you know, use all the helps that I have available for you on this. I also have a link to developmental biology journal articles. This is for because you're going to have to do some looking things up, some research uh, for discussions. And I found that this was a good help uh, for people to look up topics and be able to read articles um, that you uh, may need for your assignment and your discussions uh, that you'll have throughout the semester. Okay, so. Um, there is one large assignment that's not due till the end of the semester, and um, that basically, when you click on that, it'll tell you what what you need to do. You need to read an article. You need to be able to summarize a lot of stuff. But most of that stuff you won't have learned yet. So as you learn it, you'll say, "Oh yeah, okay, this is from this lecture. This is from this lecture." It's meant to be a comprehensive assignment that goes into many of the principles of developmental biology. By the time you've gotten to lecture six, 
you'll have pretty much gotten most everything you need for um, that assignment. So you don't have to wait till the end of the semester before you start writing it. But about midway through the semester, you should be able to start writing and working on that assignment that's due at the end, okay? Now, each lecture not only has a, um, an outline, an overview, but it also has some additional videos that, be able, that are helpful and some discussions that are required that you get points for. So make sure <clears throat> that you watch all the videos available. Some of them aren't required, but they are helpful. They'll show you what we're talking about in class. They're meant to be able to see uh, under a microscope, ultimately what's going on with these organisms. Um, yes, there are some um, problems sometimes when people are listening to the lecture um, that I'll say right here and they're like, I don't know where you're pointing at. And that's what the quiz reviews have been designed to correct is to be able to help you understand more about um, what it is you may have missed in that lecture um, as we um, do the best that we can uh, with things that are online. Obviously, it's not uh, the, the best. Being in person is the best, but we're doing the best that we can. And hopefully, with the um, lecture reviews and the other uh, helps that I've given, you should be able to get all of the information uh, that you need, and it, it should focus on um, the, uh, what you need to prepare for. Now, just to give you a general idea for the quizzes, they're mostly knowledge-based, meaning a lot of the answers are going to be asking you about very specific details about genes that are involved in development and things of that sort. So quizzes are uh, pretty intensive in terms of the knowledge that you have to know. In terms of the exams, the exams are more about the processes, especially when you get later on into how the nervous system develops and how the... Um, uh, the muscles and the uh, cardiovascular system and all, you know, how all the systems develop. Those questions on the exams are designed to really test your understanding about some of these critical thinking processes. And so they're less knowledge based. I mean, you have to learn the material, obviously, but they're less about specific genes and more about the actual process of how an organism develops. So just keep that in mind that the quizzes sometimes get people really anxious because of how intense some of the knowledge is. So you really have to study and have your notes available. Now you can use your notes during the quiz, right? It's open note. Um, but you have to make sure that you have all of your knowledge organized to be able to answer a lot of those uh, questions because they are pretty detailed. Um, most of the quizzes can be answered fairly quickly. I've given you more than enough time to be able to uh, go through them but you will run out of time if you're trying to learn the material as you're taking the quiz, right? You can look up some things in your notes, but you really have to do a lot of preparation. Same thing for the exam. Now, I understand that the first time through, things can be difficult. So you get a second chance for everything. For every quiz, for every exam, you get a second chance. It's meant to have you learn from what you did wrong. Discuss with your classmates. Meet with me. Discuss what why you didn't understand this concept. Email me, you know, some people just email me the entire semester. It's what you're comfortable with. And get the help you need before you take the quiz again, because you only get two shots, right? You take one shot, you get an idea about it, you maybe do really well, you move on to the next one. Maybe you didn't do so well, go back to the quiz. I don't tell you what the answers are because I want you to look them up. I want you to find the right answers. And if you have trouble with that, then, you know, discuss with your classmates, meet with me. Um, that's why I'm here. I'm available all throughout the semester to meet with you uh, virtually so that we can discuss some of these things. Obviously, um, I, I don't have unlimited time, but we'll do the best that we can um, with the time that we have in order to go through this. So don't shortcut yourself in any or, you know, give yourself a handicap by not taking advantage of all the resources um, that are available to you from the my help to the online help to a lot of the links that I've set up for this. Um, so as you scroll through, again, there's going to be a lot of videos. Um, sometimes the videos when it says lecture three overview, that's everything. But if you wanted to go back to a specific section, 
uh, of that video, then they've been subdivided into smaller, like 10 minute videos. So that way you don't have to kind of navigate through and be like, shoot, I just want to go back through the signaling types of signaling, you know, um, uh, video and you can click on that and it pulls up that small excerpt. So don't think you have to watch every last little thing. The lecture three overview is basically everything. And then all the videos that are indented beneath that are just sub parts of the same larger video. So you can go back and review over some of that material. Your book that you're using is a graduate level book that we've tried to bring down to a junior level class, a 3000 level class. There's no way around it. All the books that I've looked at are either subpar or way more intense. And so I've gone with the more intense and bringing it down rather than the subpar book that just doesn't do it. It just doesn't give you the depth that you need for this class. Okay, So there's some different developmental biology books out there. The one that I've chosen is very good. But as you're reading through it, you'll find that there is way more information than you need for this class. It's a graduate level book. So focus on what's on the lectures, focus on the quiz, quiz review, read through the book and use it because you're going to need it to reference examples and other things. But don't think that you have to learn at the intensity at that the book has because there's way more information than you're going to absolutely need for uh, each of these groups. Now they're set up as modules so that you can complete three quizzes and an exam within a few weeks period. Once that time is up, then you move on to the next module. This is so that you can pace yourself. So make sure that you know when the due dates are and the timetables are so that you can pace yourself. You're not allowed to move faster in this class and finish it week two. That would not be the best thing anyway. This is an intense class. You need to use all the time you have available, but it is meant to help you pace yourself so that as you complete the work, you can take time, review it, get help, then go back and then move on to the next section. You'll find that being a summer course, this is going to go very rapidly. Um, and so um, you will need to keep on top of all this information and, um, uh, and keep pace with it, okay? So uh, it's broken up in these modules so that you can do three quizzes and then an exam, and then three quizzes and then an exam, and then three quizzes and then an exam. So it, it categorizes it so that once you leave some information behind, you can move on to the next information. Some things will come up because they're all related to one another, but you'll find that you generally are learning all the new things that you need for each quiz and exam as you go through there, okay? Uh, the final exam is comprehensive, and that is during the last few days of class, so you won't be able to take that early. That's during the last part of that. And you do only get one shot at the final exam. Um, but I do have a list of questions that are, or not questions, but um, uh, words that are designed to uh, help you. And I do a um, audio review over all of the topics and generally what you need to learn. So you basically have a list of topics and a review that goes along with that to be able to help get you ready for the final. It is comprehensive. It is going to pull from every single lecture some more than others, but um, uh, generally um, it focuses a lot more on the latter half of class from lectures uh, seven through 12. And it, it pulls some from the first six lectures because those are the principles of development and you will have a lot of questions on that. But applying those principles, that's more what the final exam is all about, applying all these principles of development into the concepts that we've learned throughout the semester. And so the final exam is multiple choice along with all of the other quizzes and exams are multiple choice. Um, and so um, they are randomized as well. No two people will get the exact same quiz, but you will get the same concepts. The way that they're grouped in the quizzes and exams is that everybody will get the same concept on gastrulation and the same concept on fertilization and the same concept on signal transduction pathways, but there's a lot of information. And so it's grouped together in a way that you can be tested on any of that information. And they're of equal value in terms of their level of difficulty. 
I made sure of that. So what I'm trying to say is you'll take the quiz. Someone else in the class will take the quiz. You will not get the exact same phrasing of the questions, but you will get the same material. When you take the quiz again, it will randomize it again for you. So this is why you need to make sure that you are up to speed on all the information. You will still get the same concepts. You'll be like, oh yeah, I remember this concept. It's just he phrased it a little differently or he's asking me about a different part of that concept, right? So that's why everybody will have the equal um, uh, level of difficulty on the quizzes but because it's open book, open note, because it's online, then the questions do get randomized from person to person and they change when you take it again. It will not be the exact same questions for either the quizzes or the exams. So this is why you gotta learn the concepts, you gotta learn everything about them and prepare um, uh, to be able to answer all of the questions even though I only pull you know, about five per quiz and 10 per exam. Okay. The exams are set up so that they are an even distribution, about three questions per quiz or per lecture, I should say, with a fourth question on one of the lectures that generally is a little bit more heavily involved. So, you know, you'll know, you'll know each, each lecture has its own cadence to it. Some have a lot more information and you can expect that those will be the ones that have that extra question on the exam. So read through the syllabus, read through the instructor information, Download the lecture files, have the quiz and exam review ready, you know, prepare before you take these quizzes and exams. The discussions, these are pretty easy. These are discussions that are class discussions that are you basically posting your critical thinking about a particular concept. And generally everybody gets full points on them unless you really don't answer the discussion, which some people do. They're just like, hey, yeah, this is great, I love this. You're like, well, you didn't give any details about it, so you don't get the points. So this is not so much that you're right or wrong. These are more critical thinking concepts to get inside of your head and have you think about how these developmental processes apply in terms of medicine, skin regeneration, ethical issues like pre-implantation genetics, um, cancer and things of that sort, okay? So as long as you do the best you can on them and you answer what I'm asking, you you pretty much get the full points. But um, there are times where people just don't answer it. They don't do any work on that. And I will not give you the points just because you answered the discussion. You need to make sure that you're doing what I asked in it in terms of giving your viewpoint or critically analyzing it in a different way than we discussed in class. Um, again, these are things that are part of the class discussion that uh, you'll be posting um, so that we can you know, get your thoughts. And this is my way of basically having us feel a little bit more uh, like a class rather than individuals taking this online course so that there can be some discussion about these things, okay? So if you have any other questions that I haven't addressed in this intro video, please email me, um, but read through the syllabus first before you email me. Read through the instructor information. Make sure you, you get everything that I've already posted. And then if there's any further questions, then please ask them. I'm here for you throughout the semester. Again, this intro video is mainly to say, here I am, I'm Dr. Bradshaw. I'm here with you the entire semester. I've had some people in the reviews at the end say I had zero interaction with Dr. Bradshaw during my online course. Well, that was because they never asked. They never emailed me once. They never set up an office hour or times to meet with me virtually. They never did anything to reach out. So yes, you could go through this course without any of my help whatsoever and then at the end be like, well, that was a waste because I didn't get any help from him. You need to reach out to me because I, not being able to be there in class, won't be able to say, hey, you, what do you need? You know, I won't be able to, to do like what we normally do. So you need to come and reach out to me when you need help. Please do that. That's why I'm here. I'm not just here to say, here you go. I've given it all to you. Good luck. No. I'm here to help you as you go through the course. So um, with that, good luck with the semester, and I will be corresponding with you um, throughout the whole class.